Uh, yeah, I, I, I hope you guys are good. Uh, welcome back. Yeah, as, as I promised uh, that I will be uh, coming back uh, with a story, you know. And the reason why I, I do this from time to time is because I want to constantly remind people that what you always see on social media is is not the actual reality you know and the lavish lifestyles that you always see on social media the behind the scenes you know the behind the scenes for those type of lifestyles they should always remind you that life is 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 getting i don't know but yeah life is not what you always expect it to be you know besides you being motivated and all that nonsense okay not nonsense but yeah and all that those fleshy lifestyles that you see there's always pain behind you know and I constantly need to remind you guys that you should always remember that we were not born or basically I was not born knowing what I know or having what I have. You understand? I've been through a lot. So, as I stated before, uh, that I'm... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm writing a book about my life and all that. Uh, so this is part zero, basically, like the introduction and all that, you know, the introduction, like from start and all that. So unfortunately, uh, this live video is live. You can only watch it live. I'm not going to save it afterwards. Uh, please understand my decision. So... Uh, as I'll be starting, you know. Uh, now I'm talking to you guys as, as, as Khobuzo uh, Mutlani, you know. Khobuzo Mutlani, not coach. The story that I will be sharing with you guys has nothing to do with coach, but it has everything to do with because that was the build up into becoming coach you understand because one thing i hate the most is to have so many followers on social media who don't even know what they are following or who they are following you understand so in case you don't know uh, this will put clarity to so many things because not knowing or understanding who you're following ends up giving you wrong impressions about people, you know. For example, when you come to my timeline and you see these nice cars and nice lifestyle and automatically the first thing which comes to your mind is this guy is bragging. That's going to be the first thing if you don't know. But if you know, the first thing that's going to come to your mind, you know that this guy is actually celebrating, you know, because I've been posting when I was poor. So I won't stop posting even now. I've been posting when I was poor. It's just that nobody was watching. As you know, life, nobody is watching when you, you, you have nothing. They only want to see when you have something. And then when they see that you have something, they're starting to follow you and plan and wait for your downfall. Unfortunately, some of us, the God that we pray does not wear a trouser. The God that we pray does not ask for tithe every Sunday from people, you know. Uh, the God that I pray is a true God. <laughs> Whatever that you might wish on me is going to come on to you and your family. I'm telling you, it's not a joke. That's the kind of God I pray, you know. But nonetheless, uh, I hope everyone who's 
uh, watching is watching from a good point of view and not vice versa. So basically, um, I would like to believe that I was actually conceived. Uh, conceived simply means that an inter a, a sexual intercourse took place. Uh, by the way, I'm that stupid whereby I'll be disclosing almost all details, you know. I believe it's 2 a.m. right now and kids are sleeping. If you are here, you must be an adult. So I believe that I was conceived in 1994, right? Conceived in 1994 when um, apartheid just ended, you know. And unfortunately, I couldn't see anything or remember anything. So my parents had sex uh, in 1994. Since I was born in May, that simply means that they probably had sex just around maybe like August, I think. Yeah, like August, I think. Yeah. And then uh, the way my mom tells me is that uh, when I was still inside her stomach uh, I used to be playful you know kicking and all that like other kids and she didn't have much of cravings you know she didn't have much cravings when she was carrying me the way she puts it you know and even me personally I don't remember being in my mother's stomach and hungry <laughs> I don't remember being hungry you know in her stomach I don't even remember anything. You know, life is funny. I don't even remember a single little thing. So, my mom, obviously, poverty, you know, uh, Limpopo conditions, poverty. And she said that I was not planned. To put it correct, I'm a mistake, you know. Uh, I was not planned. I'm a mistake. Now... <laughs> This simply means that if, had it been modern times like now, uh, had it been modern times like now, I think I would have been aborted, you know? And I'm not, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with people who are, are abort kids or do uh, things like that, just in case you're watching and you've done an abortion. Uh, I'm not referring to you. Don't feel guilty. However, but I was a mistake. A mistake simply means that my mom says that she didn't know that she was going to fall pregnant. You know? And it's funny. It's funny because how can you have sex and not know that you might fall pregnant? Like, I don't get it, though. I'm like... But obviously... Most of us, most of us are mis we are mistakes. In a sense, our parents didn't plan us. You understand? Our parents didn't plan us, but as soon as they found out that we are here or we are there, they kept us. We should always be thankful for that because we could have been aborted easily. Uh, and shout out to our parents for not using condoms because if they used condoms, uh, we we wouldn't be here so mommy thank you <laughs> thank you a lot <laughs> you're motivating me uh, so yeah i mean you know one plus one happened you know and she said that she was actually working throughout carrying me as her first son you know with depression, um, family, she was about 19 years old, I think. Family, they were judging her, you know. Uh, external family members were constantly reminding my mom and my grandmother at that time. Because obviously, the father was automatically poor, you know. The father was not ready to, to have a kid. He was automatically poor, you know. That's just life, <laughs> Which is why you must always plan to have kids, to avoid your kids having to, su to suffer here. You know, so my mom was pushing, she was working. And family, family was constantly saying, how is, uh, 
sorry, how is my mom going to take care of me? Because we are poor, you know? They, they wanted to see, like they wanted to see, Hori, how is she going to raise me, you know? As much as we love family, but sometimes I feel like these external families, they are our greatest enemies. Like they are more dangerous than people who write a bad tweet about you on social media. I think family is much more dangerous than what you think, you know. So yeah, they were, they were saying, want to see how she's going to raise this child, you know. But God has his own ways, honestly. I mean, God has his own ways. Throughout the pregnancy of not having health care, not going to checkups regularly. The way she says it, she was just eating spinach. Spinach pap almost every day and cabbage potatoes every day. She hardly went to checkups, clinics, everything. But I survived somehow. somehow. I survived with just that inside her stomach, you know. And I'll, I'll forever be grateful for that, you know. Because I naturally, you know, we always thank our moms more than our fathers. Because the father does one thing only. And that is just to come inside. Then they have a choice to leave or a choice to stay. But they are not really forced to stay. They can easily leave, trust me. But a mom can actually never leave you. That's just the truth. So, uh, towards eight months, toward, towards eight months, uh, just about a month before I was born, uh, she, she went to a checkup, you know, just to see how far uh, I am into coming to earth. Remember, I didn't know anything at that time, you know. So when she was at the clinic, there was this family that we know of. And my mom is telling me these things now. There was this family which said to her that, um, what were you thinking? What were you thinking uh making a child where else you know you are poor you know now you're about to to give birth you can't even afford pampas even at that time there were no pampas there was no pampas at that time never they were using what we call malayri malayri it's like it's like a cloth it's like a cloth so like they yeah it used to be cloth yeah something like a i wouldn't say a dress but like a cloth yeah so they were told, telling my mom, this fair other family of ours, that how is she going to take care of me? Because the father is broke, poor, you are poor as well, but here you are. Uh, but obviously she just kept on praying that something will come up, you know. Now, when I was born on the 17th of May, 1995, when I was born, I was actually born around, the way she tells me, uh, around 2 to 3 a.m. in the morning. I was born around 2 to 3 a.m. in the morning. And there was this family. You know life. <laughs> life is something else. There was this family which was financially stable, right? And what they did is that they bought packs of a uh, malaria when i say malay malaria i'm referring to uh, a synonym for pampas they used to use malaria back in the days they bought like packs right and one of the families uh, the, the members in that family which was stable which was related to us they they had enough to give my mom something but they didn't, you know. And then my grandmother, uh, the way she says it, she came to the hospital with her old clothes. You know, my grandmother used to do this sewing things. She had these machines, sewing and everything. So what she did, she took all her, uh, her 
old clothes and then she turned them into malaria. She turned them into nappies. Yes. Yeah, that's the right word I was looking for for that word. Thank you, Tepo, for that word. Yeah, nappies, diapers. So she turned her old clothes into diapers or nappies. Right? Just so that I could have something to wear from the hospital. Ne? Okay, fine. Uh, my granny came with those things and then they covered me and all that. I was happy. When I say I was happy, I don't mean I remember that I was happy. No, I simply mean that they say I was healthy. Much more healthier as if my mom was eating the yogurt or these nice things. But she was just eating cabbage and pap and potatoes almost every day. That's why I don't want to eat cabbage. Even today, I don't eat cabbage. Because I've eaten cabbage nine months in inside my mother's stomach. So I can never eat cabbage again. Never. I'm tired. So, uh, when it was time to, to, to go home, then the other family, which was financially stable, they had a car. They came in and then they fetched them. And then um, my grandmother asked for leave. For leave, I mean, you know. And then they said that they are not going home. Where else? It was a lie. They were going home. And then uh, when it was time for me to go home, finally, uh, my mom and my grandmother were forced to walk, like walk from the clinic. I was actually born in a clinic, not, not hospital. So they walked uh, till they got home. They walked covering me with uh, this warm things. You know, I was wearing T-shirts and stipers. I'm a kid, man. I didn't know anything. You know, I didn't know anything. It's, 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 it was not my fault that things were, were that way, you know. Now, when we got home, the, my grandmother used to heal small children. You know, these small children uh, who have problems with... There is this thing here. This problem which uh, small babies usually have. They... they there's a color change on the, what do you call this? Yeah, whatever you call this, yeah. So she used to do that. Then a few days, I started having that problem. And then my grandmother healed me, you know, she healed me. And then that's when my life was starting now. And the way my grandmother puts it is that she's the one who is actually taking care of me better than my mom. Because my mom had to go to work, right? And then my mom, at that time, where she was working, she said that she was earning about, I think it was around about 15 rand. Not more than 20 rands where she was working. I don't remember what she was doing, but she was earning about not more than 20 rands, you know? Uh, so my grandmother used to take care of me you know and she says that i was never really a cry baby i was not the type to cry and all that nah i was not the type so as as, as time went by i starting i started developing like babies you know like normal babies and the other family they had a child who's I would say it's almost same age as me. Living the life, you know. Uh, making fun of the current, the state that we were at at that time, you know. Uh, and these are the things which constantly, constantly remind me that it's very, 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 very important to never change who you are, you know? It's very important to never change who you are because once you change who you are, you start losing yourself, you know? And once you start losing yourself, that's where you start changing on people and, 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 and all those things, you know? Now, time went by and I reached one year on my first birthday first birthday 
my mom i don't know how she did it but she 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 made me a party i still have the photos back home you know she made me a party without having having money to make a party just to celebrate my one year she did that you know and uh it it was nice i guess even though i don't really rem remember what was happening but yeah it was nice and all that and then now i had to go through the road of going to crash now i had to start going to crash now you know and going to crash uh, i only have like a memory then there not not the entire thing but according to how my mom puts it like during one year one between one and four years i was actually smart you know like i i could pick up things very very much easily you know very very much easily and she says that the way i used to love school when i was at crash it's it's the total opposite of what i think about school right now and then she doesn't understand <laughs> uh how it came about you know but yeah so uh when i was turning five years i'm not sure if it was four towards year end or if it was five i'm not sure i remember but i i graduated now graduating simply means that now i'm going to grade one now i went to grade one at this other primary school uh in 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 in, in Tuetlani now there i have memories there and there not the entire thing uh first of all i i obviously i didn't have school shoes i didn't have proper shoes for going to school uh i was wearing whatever that i was wearing at that time a uniform i did have there and there you know and then i didn't have a, a school bag so we were using uh you see testic rice you see when you buy testic rice the one for 10 kg or something something along those lines we were using something like that the designs were a bit different than what they are now you know so i was using that to carry and then obviously at that time there are kids at at school who are using nice bags you know they're wearing proper shoes you know coming to think of it Yes, coming to think of it, it looks like everybody who was eating life from birth till adulthood, everything now has changed. And then those who were struggling from birth till adulthood, now they're starting to enjoy life. You know, I, I, I don't understand how this life thing works, you know. Because honestly speaking, it's not like it was their fault that their families had money. You, you can't really blame them that they were living life because Lebanon, they were born into a rich family it's you know but it like it's like all the families that were rich back in the days now they are poor and then families which were poor back in the days now they are rich it, it gets very confusing at times you know but i guess it's the balance of life i guess so along this if you are still poor right now just know that someday some year only god knows things will change we just don't know when but obviously things don't just change you need to do something about it you know you need to do something about it but yeah so i started going to primary you know so in primary uh i that's when i actually started if if i were to tell you guys that i was actually fat like really fat you guys wouldn't believe it you know so primary like immediately when i went to grade one my grandmother says now i started gaining weight of which when i was born i was born very healthy in limpopo when we say a baby is healthy we simply mean that the baby was born fat already you know because when a baby is born as a slender in limpopo we take that as as if 
the baby is not healthy and sometimes it's not it's not that it's just the nature of the baby maybe so i was a bit chubby when i was born and then i, I got fat like from grade one grade r i mean i got fat i was eating uh, a lot of pap and spinach that's why i don't eat span spinach even today i was telling my chef the other day chef put in spinach and i told him to remove it very nicely and take it back to the pot i don't eat spinach hi gab in a people i've been eating spinach from zero years to 21 years hi gab you know eating nice food is just what i want to do now i'm tired of spinach i don't eat spinach hi gab because i was eating spinach because i didn't have a choice you know every day spinach Moro every day. Hi, hi, hi. You, Lena, you guys are lucky. You eat potatoes as chips. We used to eat potatoes as sashebu, as the potato. You see the potato that you see? It used to be meat back in the days. Every day, Monday to Friday, it's potatoes. Then uh, Saturday, Sunday, spinach. And then when there are visitors, that's when you can actually eat chicken. You, you can eat chicken once a month or once every three months. And the chicken that you eat ne, is not really a chicken. It's like a human chicken. You know a human chicken. It's the hardest chicken ever. So we were trained to even know how to chew uh, bones at an early age with small teeth. I, I'm sure I used to break a bone. Because, you know, chickens in Limpopo, it's like they are... Chicken in Limpopo, it's like they are using herbal life products. Like they have muscles. They are tough. It's like they are training. They are not soft like the chickens that you are eating now. So that's what we used. We call it hard body. So you eat hard body. One, that was the best meal ever. And then occasionally we would eat uh, wild, wild animals like rabbit. A rabbit, you would eat it once a year. Or once every six months, you know. And then uh, sometimes when things went well, you would eat a fish. And the fish is not hake. The fish is called babor. Babor, you find it in the river. You see where this dangerous animal, where this dangerous animal stay in the river. Yeah, so they used to get those fishes, those black fishes. I'm sure, I'm sure we were not supposed to eat those things. I'm sure Corona started with those things, but we just didn't know that it was Corona because there was no signs uh, which was controlling the universe at that time. We were eating things, people. Now, uh, we, during my, my early, early, early years, uh, grade one, grade two, you know, I was, I was, I was, I was abused. You know, I was abused, uh, abused by the atmosphere of the society, the atmosphere of the, of the society. I don't know if I was, I brought the abuse onto myself or not, but here is how I used to be. In my life, I used to, to be interested in hanging around cool kids, you know, hanging around cool kids, meaning that. Those kids, by Lenkhore, I know they come from uh, well-balanced families. I used to want to hang out with them, right? Meaning that Vela from grade one when I went to primary. Most of my friends were from good families. Their parents were working nice. They had cars in their families. So it was only me who was actually poor, you know? And you know what that means? Now, it simply means that when they want to abuse, you are the first person they will start with because you, 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 you got nothing. You got nothing and all that, you know, but it's fine. So I was being abused in a sense, I was the most mocked child ever. Uh, whenever they want to test anything, whether it's testing if a... A, a, a playful gun is working, they would test it on me. Of course, anything illegal or anything bad, they would use me. 
whenever they want to send someone to buy food, they would send me, right? And at that time, it's only now that I realized, actually, this was abuse and my son is not going to go through that shit. I want my son to go to school with a Bentley so that nobody is going to, to, to take him for granted, you know? And at that time, I was happy. I was what we call an ice boy. You see those ice boys? Uh, yeah, your boyfriends. Your boyfriends. Some of you boys are ice boys. Your, your rich friends are sending you to buy ice. A little bit of thing. So I was an ice boy. Now, that's just how I got to develop this unique character. This unique character of having to humble myself to get what I want. I want, you, I want you guys to understand. I used to go through that because I told myself that I'm going to humble myself. Literally, I would do each and everything anybody would ask me to do just for the sake of me getting what I want. Meaning that I actually didn't have pride. I took pride and I put it aside. And then I guess that was part of my 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 nature i guess you know fine now there was a time uh, when i was doing grade two when i was doing grade two there was a time in primary whereby this rich kids that that are that uh, i was hanging around with remember i was the only one who was poor amongst the group I don't remember, but I think there were like four or five of them. I was the only one. So this other time they took me and I, I remember they, they said, I actually I was hungry, you know. This other one had able, right? And then he said, if I want the able, I must do whatever they want me to do, you know. And I was really hungry at that time, you know, because I never really got... um. Uh, what you call caring money, you know, uh, caring money, it's the money that they give you when you go to school. I never really had that in my life. Well, maybe at least until when I went to high school, yeah, things were starting to be a bit better. So they said that if I want the able, I must actually get naked in front of the whole class. But here is how it happened. There were, you know, during break time, during break time, uh, all the boys would leave the class and only girls would eat in, inside the class because after eating, girls have a, 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 a habit of cleaning up after their mess. Unlike us, right now we don't clean up after our mess. That's why we were not allowed to, to eat in class, you know. So they said, let's go to the class where it's filled with girls and then you must get naked in front of them so that they can see your dick then after they've seen your dick then you can have the able you see i know this might mean nothing to you or it might seem stupid but i calculated it i was like okay uh, if i get naked in front of these girls they will laugh at me but I'm hungry at the same time. What should I do? I'm like, you know what? I'm going to swallow my pride and be an ice boy. Then I did as they wanted, you know. I, I, I got naked in front of the class and girls laughed at me. Luckily, uh, there were no phones. Luckily, you know. And then after I, I got naked, they laughed at me and all that. And then they gave me the apple. And then I ate. You know, I ate. And then I got what I wanted. You know, which coming to think of it now. It's funny. The truth. That's just the truth, guys. You can't have pride when you're broke. You can't have pride when you're poor. I'm going to repeat. You can't really have pride when you're broke or you can't really have pride when you're poor. 
sometimes you must know that you are being abused but for the sake of you having to get what you want sometimes you just have to put that pride aside you know because honestly speaking people can only help you if they benefit now if you want help from someone else even me personally if you come to me and say coach help me i'm going to ask you what will i get if i'm not getting anything then i'm not going to help you but if you say coach help me i'm going to wash your car you know even though you have pride you can't wash a car you have pride but so that you can so if you if if washing my car simply means you're going to get what you want let it be i mean what's the use of having pride while you are poor where else you could swallow that pride for a certain period of time to get what you want once you get what you want all those people who made you do these things they will shit on themselves just like they are shitting on themselves right now as we speak some of them they they don't even have uh, the the nerve to greet me when they see me coming they run because they know how they used to treat me that's just life that's the best revenge ever you know so yeah i i i i ate the apple and life continued now problem was that at that time i was starting to be a laughing stock in school you know people used to laugh at me that i'm that guy who got naked in front of girls my dick is small you know such things they damage your confidence as a kid and it's regarded as emotional abuse and i didn't have a brother because i was the only son to my mom and i couldn't report it to anyone so i just kept it inside me for the longest time ever so from grade 2 i was praying that god please take me out of the school like i wanted a new school because of that you know and other things which i forgot oh i remember this other incident this other incident uh there was a jojo a, you know a jojo tank behind the school a jojo tank behind the school so the jojo tanks they are always opened on top so a, a bat fell inside you know a bat a bat that thing which which is used uh, there's a bed, a bed, and there's this other one with big eyes. You know, we call it liribishi in 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 our in our culture. I don't know what you call it in English, but yeah, that thing f has fallen inside the Jojo tank, and the same group of boys or friends that I used to hang around with, uh, they made me drink the water. You know yeah it's an owl thank you thank you guys an owl fell in inside and they made me drink the water you know and i drank the water people and after that they would tell the whole school about it i'm i'm that stupid guy so i was i was i couldn't defend myself you know you know when you're poor ne? when you're poor already you undermine yourself personally you don't even wait for people to undermine you. When you are poor, you just undermine yourself. So I was at that stage whereby, you know what? No mayini. Even if they say I must shit in public for me to get food or to get whatever, you know, I would do it. And not everybody is like me. Let's understand that. Let not everybody is like, it's like me. Some will say I'm stupid. Okay, it's fine. I'm stupid, but look at where I am today. So I, I would like to believe that I was actually being trained. I was actually being trained, you know, from an early age. These little things, you know, which were, were, were happening, you know, I was being trained. So that's why I once said that if you wish to be me and we agree that I'm going to give you my life for a day, most of you guys wouldn't handle it, you know. Now... Uh, 
two years down the line, two years after when I, I went to grade, I think it was around grade four. So my mom, uh, that was just around, around about 2000 and I think it was 2006, if I'm not mistaken. So my mom got a job. Ne? My mom got a job and she got a job uh, as a teacher. She didn't even qualify to, 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 to become a teacher or to teach whatsoever. It was just luck, you know, it was just luck. So she got a job. However, the job was not paying well. But there was one good thing that I loved about my mom's new job. It was that because where she was teaching, it was a primary school, a, a private primary school. They actually say that if you are a teacher there, you are allowed to bring at least a maximum of two children to study at the school for as long as it's your own children. And therefore, they will not pay school fees, you know. Then my mom told me that uh, she got a job and she's going to be teaching at some school and so forth. And she wants me to move from public school to primary school. And I was super excited. She was worried that I was not going to be happy uh, because, uh, because of the... Agariana, when she sees me, she hears me talking about these friends every day. I'm playing with them. She doesn't know what these friends make me do behind closed doors. Just because my family is not well respected in the hood or the community whatsoever, you know. So she was actually, she actually thought that I was not going to be happy because of the bond that I have with friends. And then when she told me I was fucking happy, I was happy because now I'm going to move to a private school, new friends. Now, those people at the private school, they don't know my life. They don't know that I used to drink bad water or get naked in front of uh, girls in the class just to get able because I was hungry at that time and all that, you know. So, when I, I, I told the friends in, in, in the primary that my mom got a new job, she's going to be a teacher, and I'm going to be moving from the school, you know. And then that's when they actually started treating me much better because... It was quite a big deal going from public school to private school at that time. The only thing they didn't know was that I didn't pay school fees because my mom was a teacher there, you know. Now, I, I went to, to study, to study there. And that time, uh, my father decided that, you know what, uh, I've been staying with my mom because he was staying with, my, with his mom at that time. I think it's high time I find my own place. So that's when they actually found a stand. And then in the stand, they actually built a small shack, just a small shack. So when my mom moved to, to, to the new uh, work, they took me along. So Mara, we moved to a new home. So now I was no longer staying with my grandmother, like from 2006, uh, middle 2006, I think. So... I think it was around, yeah, somewhere there before June though. So I moved to, to a new home, which was, I would say, fully owned by my mom and dad. However, that was a shack. So that's how I got to, to, to start staying in a shack, you know? Now, from 2006, now everything is, 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 looking to be in place i think I, I was around about 11 years now i've had a problem i've had a problem around about that time uh, i was actually fat ne? i was actually fat around that time and 2007 i fell extremely sick you know extremely sick that my mom ended up thinking that maybe they are bewitching me because I moved from uh, public school to private school because obviously they didn't know that I moved there because of favors and so forth, you know. And I started becoming sick and people in the hood started talking, you know. 
Uh, that was the time HIV, you remember HIV and AIDS? That was the time it was starting. That's around that time, you know? So people were saying that I'm sick because I have HIV, you know? And my mom was thinking that maybe they are bewitching me because of that and so forth. And it was very, very difficult, you know? And my grandmother actually said that I, man, the reason why this child is losing weight, I think I have an idea. So my grandmother, that's when my grandmother took me to this other granny. She took me to this other granny. Uh, may her soul rest in peace. She took me to this other granny. And then this other granny found out, Hori, I have a problem, you know? Like I have this, I have this hole here, like on my chest. Like here, there was this hole. The hole was actually big enough that you can even pour water. Like here, you can actually pour water. Yeah. So, my grandmother took me to this other granny, which she knew. And then this other granny diagnosed me the way she diagnosed me. I don't know. And then they found out her, I have what we call Sebedi Bedi. It's a Bedi disease. And Sebedi Bedi is not caused by anything specific. It's, it's just uh, one of those natural diseases, you know? It's just one of those natural diseases. It's a long hurry. Yeah, you can't really run away from. So what happens with the disease, the way she explained it, Kihore, when you eat food, I don't know how it happens, but when you eat food, the disease will eat the food that you ate. After it has done eating the food that you ate, the disease will now eat you. Meaning that if you were chubby, you will start losing weight. You know, you start losing weight and so forth, you know. Now, uh, the granny healed me. She did her rituals. She cut me with razors, put in some powders and all that, you know, those traditional baby things. And she told me that I will never, I will never go back to the same size that I was before. Meaning that I will actually never be fat again, you know? And then uh, people in the hood didn't know about that. So they were saying that, ah, only 80, only 80. And so, you know, people will always talk. I think I should have learned from that moment that people will always talk. Whether you are poor or you are rich, somebody, somebody always has something to say. So they were saying all those things. But at that time, I was staying in, in another place. I was staying in another hood, actually. So what they were saying at the village, because I was staying in a Kasinyana, so a developing Kasi, didn't really matter because I couldn't hear almost everything. So slowly I was fading away from that lifestyle. You know, things were coming, were becoming all right. Now, uh, that was grade seven. Now, my mom was one of my teachers in grade seven. Uh, she was not uh, that that good in teaching because she never went to school for it. But she was one of the best teachers according, according to the principal uh, because she's a hard worker, you know. Uh, she's a hard worker, that woman. So grade seven, I completed my, my, my uh, grade seven successfully. Now, the weight... Remember before I was chubby, so now I was no longer chubby or fat. Now I was just a slender. I was thin. It's just now that I'm starting to have these things here. But before, now it's, it's happiness now, you know. So, uh, when I was going to grade 8, uh, my mom noticed that there's a big difference from the hopoto that I was in primary at the public in the public school and the hope that i was after going to a private school you know because now i would know how to speak english you know and then when i was finishing my grade seven going for grade eight she she didn't want me to to go to uh what you call to go to a public school because you know how public schools are you know 
she wanted me to go to a private school but problem was that she didn't afford that was her only worry but you know god has his own ways people so 2008 january when my mom was supposed to go back to that school to teach uh, now she found a better job now a better job doesn't mean that she will have money but it's far much better than what was happening or what she had before so she resigned at the school as a teacher and then she worked for this other new job and then she told me that you see now that i got a new job i can make a plan i can't afford but i can make a plan for you to study a, at a, 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 a private school a private secondary school so 2008 i went uh, for my grade 8 at a private school the name of the school it's in practice uh, it's in Tlatula science and commercial college i'm not sure if the school is still there or the principal for that matter so she took me there and then uh, what she did was that she took a loan uh, she took a loan to cover school fees for the whole year Therefore, she was paying the loan bit by bit during the course of the year. So she paid school fees for the whole year. So meaning that 2008, I never got to uh, worry about paying school fees, you know. Then I started studying. Now, my grade 8 was quite interesting, you know. Grade 8, uh, which was in 2008, you know, it was a new environment and all that, you know. But there was only one problem in grade 8. Uh, in my class, I was actually staying, you know, in grade 8, we used to share tables. We used to share tables. So in grade 8, I was staying with a bully. You, you know, those guys in, 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 in high school, not in a bad way, ne? but most of those guys who were bullies and bosses in high school, now they are the ones who are asking for two rents at the robot, robot calling us a uh, say or brother whatsoever. I don't know what happened. Yes. But yeah, I was staying with a bully. Now the guy, luckily, uh, he, he liked me, meaning that I was his ice boy. You know, whatever that he wanted, well, he would send me. And then in return, what I get is that nobody would touch me. If you touch me in high school, grade 8, you are going to explain to that guy. And then what I used to do for him, I used to do homeworks for him. Like when they give us homeworks, he, did, he, he didn't do any. And then now I have to go in, like school used to start at around 7. I have to go to school at 6 o'clock. Then when I go to school, I have to do his homework first. Before anything else, he's going to come around uh, when the, the, the class has started, but he must find his homework ready. Because at home, I was unable to do two homeworks because my mom was going to notice because she was all over my books. She was searching everything. So I used to go early in the morning, 6 a.m., do the homework for the bully. Then when he comes, then I, I give him his homework. So he used to pass because of me, you know? During that time, used to pass because of me. So life went on, life went on. So problems started towards the end of the year. Towards the end of the year, that's when problems started. Now this guy, uh, because at the end of the day, yeah, we used to write sort of exams, nyana, in a way, like final exams, in a way, you know. Uh, so before the exams like towards the end of the year this guy was actually i think he was about three to four years older than me meaning that i actually think that he was already sexually active to put it correct he was three to four years older than me but in grade eight same same grade as me i don't know what was happening but i'm not gonna judge him because I've stayed in varsity for almost more than four years as well, you know. So, now, this guy, uh, he started making me feel uncomfortable. Like, for example, remember he's a bully. He's the boss of the class, probably the boss of all grade eights. You can't do, you can't tell him anything. He was already smoking at that time. He was smoking 
a cigarette he was smoking weed whatever that needs to be smoking he was smoking so he sometimes in class when we we're sitting in class he would put in he would put his leg on my on my legs like his big leg he would put it on my tiny legs and i would keep quiet because i can't do anything about it you know and then sometimes he would brush my thighs in class Remember the tables were those ones which are hidden. You can't really see what's happening behind. And then it started making me feel uncomfortable in a way. Because at that time, I was not sexually active, I would say. I was not into dating. Like I didn't even understand what was going on, I think. So he was brushing me. Initially, basically, I would say it's sexual abuse. <laughs> Coming to think of it now. You see, all these people who abused me, I think I must go for them one by one. I remember all their names. Actually, I, I, will, I must go for them one by one. So, yeah. So, he used to brush me, you know. And I would feel uncomfortable, you know. And then sometimes, after school, he would ask me not to leave, you know. And then, when I don't leave, I would do assignments for him. And then sometimes, he would like randomly kiss me on on the thing here don't get me wrong uh, he never kissed me on the lips and i never kissed him you know but those were the things which made me hate grade eight like i wanted the year to get done because i feel like you know what this is not okay but that was actually sexual abuse but don't get me wrong i was never raped I was just touched where I was uncomfortable, you know, and yeah, so uh, it happened. Now, towards the year end, Vele exams were about to start. Now with exams, here's what the principal did. When it was time for exams, um, the principal actually mixed us. He thought he was going to stay with us, with me. So that I can show, so that he can copy my answers. But the exams, the the principal mixed us very. So almost all the exams, he was staying far away from me. I was happy. So I wrote my exam successfully. And then I passed. And then he failed. Now, the last time I saw him was when we were fetching the report in December. And he told me that since I've passed, and he failed. He's going to find me. So I was actually scared at the same time. What is he going to do to me? Because now he's blaming me that he failed. He's actually blaming me that he failed. You know? And <laughs> it's not my fault that the guy failed. Honestly speaking. It's not my fault. Like there, there's, there's nothing that I was going to do to help him. You know? Um, let me just charge my phone quickly. Apologies. Uh, let me just charge my phone here. Yo, guys, I get really show, but I can't find the hole. Like, I'm trying to charge the phone here, but I can't find the hole. Okay, yeah, I found the hole. I found the hole now. So, yeah. Now, luckily, uh, there were so many cases which were reported, uh, which were reported against him. So I think they actually dismissed him at the school. So meaning that when I was going to grade 9, he was no longer there. So that was the last time I saw that guy. Even today, I, st I, st I haven't seen him even today. But I'm sure he's probably in my DMs right now. If I find him, Utlonyela. No, I'm Now I'm not scared of him. If I find him, It's fine. Now, great uh, 2009 or oh, before that before that uh during the progress of 2008 that's when i started uh this music thing you know my uncle used to get hired to play at weddings so he used to take me along so that's when i started this music thing you know i started uh falling in, in love with music during the course of 2008 when i was still in grade eight connecting speakers and all that so my uncle is the one who actually introduced me into this thing. And then slowly I fell in love with it. But I was not real, really serious at that time, obviously. 
Now, grade 9, February, grade 9, I went to the same school again for my grade 9. Now, my mom did the same thing that she did the previous time, which was to pay school fees for the whole year via a loan. So, so she took another loan, maybe I don't know what happened. I mean, she paid school fees for the whole year and then she was paying everything bit by bit, you know. Now, grade 9, February. 2009 I remember 2009 I was still staying in a, in a shack at that time you know so shh, there was a bash at school and then at that bash they said that they are looking for sound so immediately when I heard the class prefect say that they are looking for sound I went to the teacher the class teacher he used to like me a lot because I used to be smart you know and then I told him that my uncle actually have has he has sound that you 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 can hire you understand and then the school agreed and then I, I i when i went home i told my uncle now the problem was that my uncle was working at that time so because he has trained me around 2008 to connect the sound to play using visual dj to operate the computer so he actually sent the whole sound system to the school without his presence and then i was actually the one who was playing like the the I don't, I don't remember if it was valentine's bash or what what but it was around february so i was i was i was i was playing for the whole school so that's when i actually started falling in love with being a dj like 2009 when i was playing with visual dj it was quite a dope event it was nice i really enjoyed i remember everything there and then after the monday after because obviously the event was on a friday the monday after uh, i was starting to be the popular guy in school you know being popular the popular guy in high school used to be lit i don't wanna lie you know so i started being the popular guy in 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 uh grade nine so most people who were with me in grade eight they actually said that i'm actually cool they didn't think that of me because i was under the wing of a bully i was not allowed to make friends i was only allowed to be friends with the bully only if he sees me with any other kid that kid will get beaten he didn't want anything <laughs> to do with me you know so after that i started being uh, famous in school you know um I'm famous and all that. I didn't even have a name that time. Maybe I think I was DJ Hopoto. Yeah, that time maybe I think I was something along those lines. And then now not knowing, not knowing that this is going to affect me. That's when I my studies were actually affected. So in class, I would draw visual DJ. I would imagine myself uh, playing music, being a DJ. I will start dreaming man like in class i would lose concentration draw cd uh, not cdjs but visual djs related things good music in general you know and that actually affected my schoolwork so march term one i failed grade nine i failed uh term two which was in june i failed again in grade nine you know and then my mom was actually concerned what's going on with uh you know september term three i failed now september something happened september when i after i failed for the third time going towards the last term now uh, i remember i was coming back from school ne? i came back from school i was going home so when I got home, remember a shack is always hot when it's hot. And a shack is always cold when it's cold. So a shack can adapt to any nature. So I got home, uh, we knocked off early, I think, on that day. So I got home and then I, I there was only one bed in, in, in the shack. So I wouldn't say I had my own bed. I was actually sleeping on the ground, you know, at that time. Just beside my parents' small single bed their bed was a single bed by the way it was not a big bed at that time uh, even today i still ask my mom how did they fit 
on that small bed doesn't make sense you know but yeah so it was hot the shack was hot Baba. i took took off my uniform and then i got naked right <laughs> i got naked and then uh, there was just a small mirror and then i was just thinking about my dreams as a musician or as a dj you know and then at that time i i was playing with my dick you know just playing uh, scratching it uh, remember what i said I, I said that i'm stupid i will not hide anything so i was playing with my dick man just rubbing it playing with it i keep in mind <laughs> i didn't know i didn't know what i was doing i was just thinking about myself as a dj so I was brushing my dick and all that. Grade 9, 2009. So after a few minutes, I started feeling something. I'm like, no, man. You know what? Uh, this, starting, this is starting to feel nice. It's starting to feel good. Then I started grabbing it now. Grabbing my dick full, 100%. And then I, I did the things. You know? First time. You know? And I did the things. And then it was starting to feel good. You know? It was starting to feel good. And then I think I came. Ne? But nothing came out. Do you know, gents, now I'm talking to you. You know this. You know the feeling of coming. You know the feeling of coming. But at that time I came, but nothing came out. No spam, zero. Like nothing, zero spam, zero. And then after that, I was like, Damn it. And like I'm intelligent. I'm fucking intelligent. You know, I'm fucking intelligent. Hi, hi, hi. No, and like I'm smart. So in my head, in my head, that was my first time, remember. In my head, I didn't honestly, uh, we grew up without internet. So I didn't know most things about sex, masturbation and all that. I didn't know most things. So in my head, I actually thought that I'm intelligent. In my head, I was like, I'm actually the first guy who has ever done this in the world. You know? So I was thinking of ideas that, okay, maybe the news people can come and I sell them the experiment. Or maybe I can go to the radios and tell them the experiment so that they can... Uh, tell other people. To me, I thought I was unique. That one? A week passed. I was doing it every day. Every day after school, I would do it. Sometimes when uh, my parents are sleeping at night. Remember, I'm sleeping on the ground. They're sleeping on the uh, bed, single bed. I'm sleeping on the ground. I just don't know whether when they were sleeping on the single bed, were they side by side, uh, yeah with each other or one was on top of the other i don't know the details ne? but i was on the ground i would do it they're on top very smart you know because that was like my technique like that was my discovery my biggest discovery i've never heard of anybody who has ever done that in my life ha so there was this other, there, there's this other cousin of mine now, this other cousin of mine, I spent almost all my life uh, with him. Almost. Right? So, he used to stay with my grandmother. Immediately after I left to stay with my parents, he went to stay with, <gasps> sorry, with my grandmother. So, weekend came and I went to visit my grandmother and the boy was there. He's of my age. And then I called him by the side. And then I'm like, that was 2009. I'm like, boy, there's something I need to tell you. And I think we can actually be billionaires. You know? No, it's not Vincent. It's not Vincent, by the way. We can actually be billionaires. And I was like, he's like, okay, I'm listening. And I'm like, come, let me show you. We went to the toilet. And then I took off my dick. And I started doing things. So I want you guys to understand. Because to some people, it might be weird to follow me today. 
then tomorrow I'm talking about masturbation. Masturbation. You're asking yourself, what's wrong with this guy? So this this thing started long time ago, and I love it. It's my invention even today. So I started showing him. So when I showed him, he laughed at me. You know that thing you think somebody doesn't know something. Ah. Uh, so after that, it's telling me that boy, when uh, you are very slow. You started this thing in 2009. Now I've been doing it from 2008. Then I got angry at him. I got angry at him. Not that he knows my secret because he started before me. But I got angry at him that he knew this thing before me but didn't bother telling me about it. So now I had to find out on my own that on my own. You understand? So I got angry at him, but eventually we worked around it. So that's when I actually discovered masturbating, you know? And in my head, like masturbating was my invention. I don't know why the fuck would I think that I'm the first person in this world to masturbate, you know? So after that, that's when I actually started normal uh, wet dreams, you know, wet dreams. Uh, but there's only one problem with wet dreams. That's why I don't like wet dreams. The problem that I have with wet dreams, especially if you're in Limpopo, they say that if you wake up and you find yourself, uh, because I remember this other time when I woke up when I was bathing, going to school, still towards uh, grade 9, 2009, when I was doing grade 9, uh, my underwear was a bit sticky, you know? My underwear was a bit sticky. It was a bit sticky. That simply means that I had a, a, a wet dream and I came. But I didn't. I don't remember anything. So the problem with coming from Limpopo, they say that if you have a head wet dream, there was a witch who was busy with you the whole night. So I started uh, worrying that I'm... Um, and you see, these witches, these witches during the night, they are actually busy with me. They are raping me now. I don't like this thing. Because I want to come on my own. I want to come on my own. I want to make myself calm. You know? So that's when I discovered wet dreams and all that. It's part of growing up, you know? And my cousin, uh, there was, remember, uh, may her soul rest in peace. There was a pastor by the name of Pastor Irene. She passed on, by the way. Uh, there was Pastor Irene and there was... A couple of pastors, you know, these pastors who are praying for people. So, this other time, we were watching uh, their channel. And then they were saying that uh, if you masturbate, it's a demon. There's a demon inside you which is masturbating you. And then I started being scared. That, fuck, I have a demon. Hey. But at the same time, I'm like, I have a demon. I'm like, oh, fuck, I love that demon because it makes me feel good. And then the pastor will go on and say, yes, the demon will make you think what you're doing is right and it will make you feel good. If you are masturbating, touch the screen, I will pray for you. My cousin started first. He touched the screen. After touching the screen, he fell on the ground. I, sh I, I woke him up. He didn't wake up. Next, for like maybe like almost five minutes or so. And then after he woke up, I asked him, boy, what happened? He doesn't remember anything. And then he asked me what happened. I'm like, the pastor said, if you are masturbating, touch the screen. And you touch the screen. Now I didn't. And then you fell and fainted. And then I started believing in this miracle things from that point, you know? And... He said to me that, you know what, boy, from this moment onwards, I no longer want to masturbate. I'm stopping this thing because it's a demon. Remember, I didn't touch the screen. Even today, I never touched the screen. I didn't want to faint because personally, I love that demon. It's nothing. Personally, now I love that demon. If you say it's a demon, it's fine. I'm happy with it. I get I get know you are happy with your own. None, I'm happy. So he said that okay, I will, 
I'm, I've stopped masturbating. It's best you stop masturbating. Then I said, okay, I'll stop. Then after that, I didn't stop. I continued. I got know they didn't pray for me. I continued. I masturbated left, right, center. Sometimes I would do it three times a day until my dick is even painful now. I would only stop when the dick is painful or when it's crashed. Because, you know, sometimes when you masturbate, there are methods of masturbating, you know. There is like making love type of masturbation. That is like the slow motion one. You're feeling yourself. You're brushing yourself. You don't really need anybody to make you happy. You can actually make yourself happy. You guys are dramatic. You know, you're brushing yourself and all that. And then there's this other one whereby you're on it, you know. There's this other one whereby today you are telling yourself that, you know what, today I'm going to tear this dick apart. Today I'm going to do rough sex. And unfortunately, I used to love rough sex through masturbation. You know that one? <laughs> but it used to my dick would be painful after it and that's the one which made me uh which the one which i used to enjoy the most unfortunately you know that's the one which i used to enjoy the most so time went by uh in my head uh that cousin of mine stopped uh masturbating then we went to 2010 2010 uh I was still on it, right? Now, December, when I got my results for grade 9, my mom was extremely disappointed. Actually, in grade 9, I I got condoned. You know, have you guys have heard of what we call a, a condone? Uh, guys, just in case, just in case the live stops, just know that we have reached a maximum of one hour. And I will come back with part two some other day. Uh, just keep awake around this time. Uh, I will come back next time with part two. Just in case the live ends, don't be surprised. Ne? Uh, it will be a maximum of an hour. So grade uh, nine, my mom was disappointed because I got condoned. Condoned simply means that I didn't pass the way she expected me to pass. Literally, I failed. They just condoned me to go to grade 10 because of uh, space. Something like that. You know, I didn't pass the way I was supposed to pass my grade 9. You know, because I used to be the cool kid in school. I started masturbating a lot. Instead of studying, I used to masturbate. You know, which I was happy. It made me happy. And then I would uh, go to these gigs with my uncle. I would think more about making music, being a DJ and all that, you know. So my mom was disappointed, especially because she took loans to, for me to, to, to study at a private school, right? And then all I did was to play the whole year. And remember, if I fail, then it simply means that she's going to be paying for the same thing this following year, you understand? So my mom made a decision that she's going to take me to a public school. So I was, I was sad, but at the same time, I didn't blame her that much. I mean, because I've brought this on myself, you know. So now I had to go to a primary school, uh, to a public school, I mean, grade 10. Now, grade 2010, that's when I was going for my grade 10. Now, 2010, that was the time World Cup. World Cup was in South Africa, if you can remember. You know, that's like 10 years ago. So I went to my grade 10 in, in Lulu High School, that is in Bakersford. So I was not happy about the school. The only thing that made me happy about the school was that my one of my best friends since from birth was going to be studying with me. Like the last time I saw him or studied with him in the same uh, as, uh, school was in primary. So we were going for the high school together now. So that's the only thing which made me happy. So we started there. So when we went to, to, to grade 10, I sat down with my parents and they asked me, uh, Hopoto, what do you want to become? And then I told them that I want to become a DJ. My father was super disappointed in me. You know, my mom was angry at me. They asked me again. What do you want to become? I said, I want to become a DJ. 
Then they asked me one simple question. Look at all the local DJs. Is there any DJ that you see who has his own house or his own car in the hood? And I was like, no. And then they said, then why would you want to become like any of these guys? You know? And that time it made sense. I mean, like, there was no D local DJ who, who seemed to make it at that time. Uh, you know? And I was a bit discouraged with that career. And then they asked me to put it on hold or forget about the career. I was like, okay, it's fine. I will do so. Then they said that when I go to, uh, they want me to be a doctor at least or a lawyer or a nurse whatsoever. You know, those normal decisions which our parents want to make for us. Then when I went to, to, to uh, I think we spent about a week before choosing a career. I guess, you know, in grade 10, you get to choose whether you want to do commercial uh, stream, you want to do the science stream, the geography things and what, what. Now, when I went to grade 10, uh, I've heard the rumors that science is for intelligent people and science is difficult. So the one which is better is commercial stream. So I took commercial stream. Not that I had any plans of being anything in the commercial stream. I just took it because... I didn't want anything that's going to make me work hard. So my grade 10 started. Now my grade 10 started. Uh, that's just, uh, that's going to be part of part one. Remember, this is like part zero. Uh, I covered it from birth, uh, basically till, till present, you know. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, I've come to the end of part zero. Unfortunately, I've come to the end of part zero. Uh, part one will I will pick it up from grade ten when I was actually doing grade ten. Now all the things that I've told you, they are in the book. Remember, I said I told you guys that I'm busy with a book right now. They are in my book. Now the book has more details. So here I'm just giving you guys an overview and over, you understand? Yeah. So the book has almost everything. But don't worry, I will tell you guys the book on this live sessions and so forth going forward. So I will, I will, I will do part one some other time. Maybe tomorrow or I don't know when. Yeah, maybe tomorrow, I don't know when. But I, I'll, I'll, I'll post it on, on my stories. I'll actually, I'll actually post it on my, on my stories for part two, you know? So, that was just about it from birth. In case you just joined, I actually start, started from birth uh, till grade 10, you know? There were so many interesting things, you know, about my childhood, you know? And... Those are the things which actually, I'm sure most of you guys are asking themselves, why do I still wear slippers? Why don't I look like other forex traders wearing the Gucci, the suits and all that, you know? It's because of how I grew up, you know? I've learned to always be myself. Regardless of the circumstances, I've learned to always be myself all the time that's why even today i'm still comfortable i can assure you you guys take me as a celebrity partially you know and most celebrities most celebrities are masturbating but they will never tell the public that they're masturbating nah i'm that type of a guy who doesn't compromise because of what people will think or what people will 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 say about me. I'm always me. It's it's more like it's either you accept me as I am or you fucking move on. Simple. You know, especially if you are not there for me when I was still down in life. So I can't want to do things just to impress you. You know what I'm saying, you know? So most people, they find it weird to talk about such things. Hey, I'm masturbating. They think people will lose that respect. Nah, 
If you respect me, you must respect the real me. Better real respect than the fake one, people. Mena, I don't go around the bushes. Straight. Pa. Maybe that's why to some people I still seem weird. I'm not weird. I'm real. Most people on social media, they are pretending to be these perfect people. You know, perfect. Everything is perfect. Now my life is as raw as I present it to you guys. You know? And when you say, coach, you inspire me, I want you to mean it in a sense, Yahore. You know who's the person who inspires you. You guys, I'm sure you are following these celebrities, but you have never seen them off makeup. Without makeup, you have never seen them. But you are busy saying, hey, mama, you inspire me, you inspire me. You are following these celebrities, you inspire me. You don't even know what they've been through or what they are going through because they are not presenting that to you guys. They are presenting you guys, to you guys the fleshy lifestyle, you know. I'm, 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 I'm going to do both. I'm going to remind you where I come from. Then I'm going to show you. Remember, when I show you my current lifestyle, to me it's not fleshy. To me it's my life. You understand? Especially because it's not like I've hidden anything in terms of who I am or how I, make, or how I made it. You know? It's only fleshy when a person comes to you and say, yeah, I've bought an RS7, I've bought a G63, you know what I'm saying? But you don't really know where that person comes from. Now, I'm always reminding you guys where I come from all the time, you know? That's just the real me. So I want you guys to understand and know who you're following, you know? So that in the history of books, you will say there was this guy. This guy takes everything as raw as it is, you know? Uh, that's why even today, I, I PR companies, they fail to control me. Because I'm going to tell you, that's the, one of the reasons why uh, I no longer have a reality show on TV. Having a reality show on national television is nonsense. Most reality shows on television, they are nonsense. I'm telling you, I've been there. You know, even though the reason why mine was no longer there on television is because of finances. The channel uh, didn't pay us our money. And because we were not desperate for TV, we said, fuck you. Then we parted ways, right? But I can assure you, most reality shows, they are fake. So the channel wanted us to be these people that we are not. You understand? For example, starting with the name, FBK Millionaires, you know? They wanted to send a message that we are FBK millionaires. We are all about nice cars, nice lifestyle, girls, you know, all over. We are living the life. But what are you going to learn by me coming to your television with a G63 that you don't know how or did I even get it? What are you going to learn from having to see me drive an RS7 where else you don't even know where I started? So I'm all about showing you where i started because when i show you my present my my my, my present lifestyle i'm not a uh, flashing it's my life when i'm when i'm asking you which car am i supposed to buy i'm going to buy it i'm not acting it's my life i afford to live it i deserve it because i've worked hard for it you understand yeah so so those, those, those people, they wanted us to turn into these people that we are not, do these things which you, you can, if you can check, most reality shows have one thing in common, the lifestyle, it's, it's almost perfect, you know, a person wakes up with makeup, what the fuck is that? What, how, how can it be a reality show but a person is a, is a, with a makeup already in jail? You know, the reason why I went, I agreed going to television was because I wanted to show you guys or I would say talk about what I've been through and then showing you my presence. You know, unfortunately, everything was twisted. You know, that's why even today the media 
twisted everything but it's fine it's it's part of life i guess there's nothing i can do about it you know so i wanted to show you guys raw trading how we trade how when we trade we lose how we lose money when we trade you know because it's not just about making money now here's the funny thing everything which involves trading which was the whole purpose of the show it was captured but it was never put in any episode that's when i told my manager that you know what these people are fucking with us on top of that they owe us money on top of that they're twisting everything now they're turning us into these characters that we are not now we are all about showing people that we have money eh, i know having money is not what we are going to pretend to impress you we don't uh, live our lives to impress anyone having money is our current life it's reality right now but we want you to understand how we got to where we are that's the most important process you understand so don't be fooled by most reality shows you see everything 90 percent of the things that you see there are scripted <laughs> that's just the truth 90 percent of the things that you see there they are scripted myself and st vincent st we used to be the most difficult characters when they tell us that coach you must go and find a slay queen i used to say fuck you no i'm not going there and then they will only bind me by the contract and they but you signed contract you know i'm like okay it's fine but i will not do it i do me you know and many people don't understand the purpose behind that but with time with time slowly people will adjust man you know because the last thing i want is to come in front of you guys and sell you guys dreams you know uh, the only thing that i want is to be unique is to be unique is to know that coach has money but behind coach's money there's actually more sad stories than the good ones the reason why that scene is very important is because I know for sure that whenever you go through something, you're going to relate that if I'm going through an emotional abuse in school or varsity, all these chess boys, they're flaunting and flashing in front of me because their parents are rich. Coach has been through that before. That's going to keep your spirit going. You understand? That's, that's the agenda that I'm trying to push in the industry regardless you know even myself presenting myself as a dj right now it's not something that i started last year it's something that i started from way back 2008 but unfortunately when you don't have money nobody takes you serious now when i have to shoot a music video i, I i'm not borrowing anyone's car i'm not borrowing anyone's uh, house I'm not asking anyone for sponsorship. You, you understand? That is, that is just the dream lifestyle I've ever had. Whatever that I wanted to invest in when it comes to my life, I don't need anyone's permission. Trust me, having to depend on people for something, it's nonsense. Lena, myself included, truth of the matter is, I will not help you if I don't benefit. That's just the truth, unfortunately. You know, it's better than me having to stand in front of you guys and I'm like, hey, I'm going to help you guys. No. I will help somebody who shows that, you know what, there's potential. Or I will help somebody whom I know that at the end of the day, I will benefit something. There's nothing for free, guys. Once you start getting that through your head that you need to work hard for every fucking shit you achieve in your life. And the sad part about it is that when you work hard for your nonsense, 0% nobody's there. When you're on top, everybody's here. Now they are concerned. How did you make your money? You know, how did you make your money? When, who are you? To drive a G63 at the age of 25. Who are you? You know? It's because the society has been condemned in that mindset. That 
a black child can make it through hard work of, of some sort. I don't know how to put this, but yeah, it's like once you go beyond what people have imagined, then you deserve to be investigated. But I can assure you right now, people, uh, if you want to achieve with whatever plans that you have in your life, first step, keep quiet. People, keep quiet if you want to achieve. When you have achieved, there is nothing they can do to stop you. That's why I came to the live and I asked people that, you know what, I, I, I want to buy a, a, a small car that's just in jail for control. Then there's somebody who doesn't like what I said, but there's nothing they can do about it. I mean, what can you do to stop me from buying the car? Will you say I must not buy it? Are you the garage? If you own a garage and close yours, I will go to the next garage. You are not going to stop. So... Before you make it, mm -hmm. keep quiet. After you make it, one by one. Because after you make there's a difference between talking before you make it and talking after you made it. That's where people get to, to miss the puzzle, the puzzle. I talk because there's nothing you can do or say to stop me. That's why. Twitter. Number one, they tarnished our names. Even the channel itself. They tarnished our names. Everything. Today, I'm still here. And I'm asking you guys, which car should I buy? And I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it. Whether they like it or not, I'm going to buy it. There is nothing they can ever do to stop me now. It's only the one above who can stop me. There is no human being. It's only God. God, the one who gave me this knowledge, is the only one who can stop me. But before you make it, tool out to do Keep quiet in Chaka. Work underground. Pusha, pusha, pusha. Because witchcraft is not only through muti. Witchcraft is through words. What people are doing to me out there, it's witchcraft. I mean, how can you say, let's start there. I was watching this other show. There was this other show, Checkpoint on ETV. Someone asked me to watch it. I was watching it this past week. Now, there was this people who got scammed through Forex trading investments, of which is one thing that I never do or that I will never do in my life, right? Now, along the process of the comments, people were dragging my name. They're like, yeah, another scammer is this one. They're pointing me. But if you can take a look, if you can bring those people forward, if I can have one-on-one -on -one conversation with them, I'm talking about me now. I'm not talking about Forex traders or other traders. I don't care about them. I don't care how they, they did their, their stuff. I don't care how they work. I'm talking about me. If you get to ask that person or... When you say coach has scammed you, what, how did coach scam you exactly? When you ask that person that question, they don't have an answer. They will say, hi, yeah, those things don't exist. It's just a scam, right? And that's, that's the first sign of witchcraft starts there. First sign of witchcraft. And remember, for the mere fact that you were not there when I was hustling alone, well, immediately once you say that about, about me and I see it, I'm going to kneel down. I'm going to pray to the God, that who, the God who gave me this life. I will say, God, my enemies are talking again. Please deal with them. I'm telling you, poverty will be upon you for the rest of your life. This, mm. You see this? People, let me give you an advice. You see, as people, we believe in different religions, uh, different spiritual matters and so forth. And some of us, the more you talk bad about us, 
is the more we kneel down and pray for you. And the God that will, we pray will deal with you. So don't be surprised when things don't go your way. It's because of this. Now, if only, nah, I use this. I use my tongue to kiss, number one. I use my tongue to lick whatever I'm licking. Whether it's a nipple or it's whatever I'm licking. Whatever that I'm licking, that's what I use my tongue for. I would never use my tongue to badmouth another person who has never done anything wrong to me. I don't think all these people that are talking bad about me specifically have done anything bad. Some of them I've never even talked to them. But they, 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 they hate me already. I pray for them. God will deal with them. I'm telling, I'm telling you. So please, if you are a hustler, watch what you say with your mouth. Because some of us, we are not praying humans, people. Some of us, we are not praying humans. After you, 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 you hurt my feelings. Remember, like people, this is your celebrities. I mean, a celebrity, a whole full-grown cheese boy. Just comes out of nowhere and discredit your whole hard work. I mean, where the fuck were they all these years when I was poor? Where were they? Nowhere to be found. You know, but they just come and then they discredit all your work. But I, I guess that's, that's, that's part of life. I mean, it's part of life. So if you are a hustler, don't, don't, don't be like those people. Right? If you are a hustler, learn to keep quiet about your tongue. Just hold your tongue and keep on pushing. Then when you make it, that's when you can talk. You understand? When you make it, that's when you can talk. When I go to somewhere around uh, part three or part four on my story, that's when you'll get to understand why I'm talking too much now. It's because I've been quiet for too long, people. I've been oppressed for too long. I've been oppressed. I've been keeping quiet for too long. Now enough is enough. Now but long yeah. Whatever No one can stop me It's only God And even if God stops me It's because he wants to save me at some point There is no human being that's gonna stop me They will keep on talking But for the mere fact That they were never there for me I mean, when I started this life, I explained, I explained how I grew up. I don't understand how somebody who had the opposite life gets to undermine my hustle, you know, just because Bona, they've had it better in life, you know, just because Bona, they've had their rich parents take care of them and all that. That's one thing I don't think I'll ever understand. And I would say, my biggest fear right now i have a huge fear towards how my son is gonna be i don't know how he's gonna turn out to be but i really hope that when he grows up he will develop this mentality that my father worked hard for this nonsense therefore just because i'm privileged to go to high school with a bentley doesn't mean that i should go there and swear at other people who have done nothing wrong to me now i can never swear to anybody who has done nothing wrong to me trust me if i say you will die poor it's because you started me if you start if you start me i will deal with you i have too much anger i'm very very angry very very angry because you are not there i was alone I'm very alone very very alone you know, so I hope my son will get to understand that my dad has worked hard for this. Even though I'm a cheese boy, you know, I don't have a problem with cheese boys. Ne? I don't have a problem with that. But I want cheese boys need to understand to respect other people's hustles. If you have seen me attack anyone, they started me first. Always know that. And I've been quiet. 
And I love my anger issues. I'm very angry. I've been quiet for too long. Now come with your tendent tendencies. I will take you up there and put you ground on the ground with immediate pay effect. Yeah. So nonetheless, uh, uh, part zero was actually nice. So what I will do, I will I will try to save the video on the timeline. Sorry, but after a day or two, I think I'm gonna I'm going to remove it. So I'm just gonna save the video on my timeline. So you can watch it from the beginning in case you are not here. But I I I, I hope that me telling you how I was born, how I grew up. Remember, Forex is not involved in 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 my process of from birth till where I stopped, which was in 2012. Forex only started in 2016. Now you'll get to understand how I got to develop into being a new character, you know. Uh, I've, I've, I've had multiple characters. It's, it's development, you know, it's development. It's, it's part of life, you know. So you'll get to understand so that when you see me, tomorrow if you see me uh, driving the most expensive car or living in the most expensive house, you must understand that this guy used to get naked in front of class just so you could get able to eat. And he was being abused by the same cheese boys. Go to this cheese boys. They started with me when I was poor. Now they're here. I will deal with them. One by one. I will deal with them. And the only way to deal with them is to get more and more successful. When, you th when they think you are down and out, you hit them with the lightning. You show them that you will always talk. But the God that I'm praying does not wear a trouser. You know, so nonetheless, uh, thank you guys. Uh, thank you guys for, for having me today. Uh, I will see you guys some other time. I will see you guys some other time. And uh, when I go to part one, whereby I will be starting from 2010. 2010, uh, going to wherever I will stop. I don't know. So thank you guys for watching and may the God bless your hustle. May the God bless you for taking your time uh, watching my nonsense because I know I talk nonsense most of the time. That's just uh, the real me. That's just a uh, part of who I am. I, I really can't pretend into being something that I'm not. So nonetheless, thank you guys for the advices in terms of uh, the car that you think I should buy. Uh, next week, from next week, or from next week going forward, uh, uh, I, I will come with it alive and when i do always remember that it's for inspirational purposes because i actually love how people react to how i inspire them otherwise i could wake up tomorrow and go buy a car without telling you guys you know i want you guys because you are not part of my journey before i want you guys to form part of my journey currently you know uh, so that when things go hard on your side, of which they will get hard, trust me, all the time. Even Linda, uh, going forward with my story, I will, I will share sensitive stuff. You'll get to see that my life is not as perfect as you see it on social media or as perfect as you used to see it on national television the time we had a reality show or even as perfect as you see it on the YouTube version of the reality show. You know, So I want you guys to connect with me throughout each step of the way you know because i've noticed that the more people say thank you for inspiring us is the more god blesses me more you know that simply means that i'm doing a better job than the pastors who are promising you guys miracles even though you guys love miracles that's the problem which you are having even with forex you want to have miracles i don't know if you are not learning anything with uh, what i've been through in this game you know but you just want miracles all the time hi 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 but yeah nonetheless uh, thank you guys for having me today uh, it's four o'clock in the morning 
four o'clock in the morning you you guys you guys have time ne? so yeah thank you guys for 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 watching me uh, throughout this time so now i have to masturbate i have to masturbate so that i can sleep yeah, remember if masturbation is a demon then i love that demon it makes me happy you know i don't need prayers uh, you can pray for me from a distance it's fine but i'm happy so that's just who i am i'm confident about everything that i do but nonetheless uh, the support that you've shown fbk throughout the years you know uh, i appreciate i appreciate that you know i know i speak crap most of the time but it comes from uh, a good heart you know so thank you guys for being with us thank you guys for supporting us defending us against witches all the time you know we we will always appreciate that we do see every little detail you know and to all the hustlers all the best to you guys you know may the god or may the lord bless all your hustles throughout your journey nonetheless uh, if i'm gonna be doing part two today later on i'll probably do it around uh, i might probably do it around uh i don't know what do i have uh, probably around 11 yeah probably around 11 p.m yeah 11 p.m that's when i'm gonna be doing the live yeah i'll probably do it around 11 p.m so yeah nonetheless uh may the lord bless you and thank you guys have a blessed night God bless. God bless. Ta-ta.